In most places in the universe, hydrogen molecules are moving randomly about as a gas, like those sheep grazing in open space. But the conditions inside Jupiter don't let them roam so freely. The difference between the different states really has to do with how closely the molecules are crushed together, if you will. On Earth, we see liquids form from gases when we leave out a glass of ice water. As warm air comes in contact with the surface of the cool glass, the drop in temperature saps the energy of the air molecules, bringing them closer together and forming a liquid. Temperature isn't the only thing that affects the state of matter. Pressure also plays a very important role. Pressure, as you can imagine, sort of crushes. The higher the pressure, the more it crushes molecules together and can take a gas and compress it into a liquid. For example, even in interstellar space, where it's over 450 degrees below zero, a glass of water would just boil away. So when you take that glass of liquid water to space, it's not the temperature, it's the low pressure that allows all the molecules to fly away and turn the glass of water into a gas. The reverse occurs inside Jupiter's blast furnace interior, where hydrogen molecules are jammed together by the colossal weight of the atmosphere above. If you squeeze the particles down so they're not vibrating very much, then they tend to sort of stick to one another. They start flowing together. That's the liquid state. That's why if liquid hydrogen were somehow instantly transported to Earth, without enough pressure to contain it, even a tiny bit could redefine what we think of as a hydrogen bomb. Well, it wouldn't be a good idea to scoop up a cup of the liquid hydrogen from Jupiter because it's under tremendous pressure it would be a tremendous explosive, much better than TNT. It would be a total disaster. Inside Jupiter's liquid hydrogen ocean, it's over 17,000 degrees, hotter than the surface of the sun. The bluish glow at these depths signals that we've reached another type of liquid. It's still hydrogen, but in a very special form called metallic liquid hydrogen. It's brighter than the surface of the sun and far, far bluer than the surface of the sun. It's an environment where nothing that we can build here on Earth could withstand that for more than a fraction of a second. In this extreme environment, the hydrogen molecules that make up Jupiter's ocean start to act very strangely. The molecules of the regular liquid hydrogen ocean are like those sheep, moving as a flock. Or better yet, more like what's happening inside of an amusement park, when bumper cars are streaming around a rink. So what makes a liquid a liquid is the ability of the atoms and the molecules to slide past each other. But atoms are free to move and they jostle around, much like these bumper cars here at this bumper car rink. They can't fly freely, but they are changing their neighbors all the time. Inside each hydrogen atom, whether it's in a gas or liquid form, a single electron is bound to its nucleus, buckled into the driver's seat of its own atomic bumper car. But at the surface of Jupiter's metallic liquid hydrogen, a depth where the pressure reaches three million times what we experience on Earth's surface, the hydrogen molecules are freaking out. The liquid hydrogen actually becomes liquid metallic hydrogen. Now what I mean by that is that the liquid hydrogen starts conducting electricity and heat really well. Inside Jupiter's metallic liquid hydrogen, electrons are jumping from molecule to molecule, splitting away from their own nucleus and finding another home they're carrying electric charges efficiently from one place to another. And the transport of electric charges, that's the current. That's what allows current to flow. And you sure wouldn't want to be there if someone were to discharge a big bolt of lightning or something like that, because that electricity would travel easily through the liquid metallic hydrogen, zapping you completely, frying you. The closest thing to metallic liquid hydrogen on Earth 
is liquid steel. When they pour the liquid steel out of the cauldron, it's glowing hot, it's flowing, it's conductive of electricity. That's very much like the interior of Jupiter would be like if you could be down there. Inside Jupiter, the metallic liquid hydrogen is different from the regular liquid hydrogen because it's conducting electricity. So the fact that the electrons are able to flow freely inside means that you can have strong electric currents in the interior of Jupiter. And whenever you have a fluid that has strong electric currents, then it will create a magnetic field. For over four million miles of space in each direction, Jupiter's magnetic field scoops up and deflects charged particles that naturally course through our solar system. But the largest and most powerful magnetic fields in the universe shoot out from curious stellar corpses known as neutron stars. These magnetic fields may also be generated by liquid. However, the interior of a dead star seems like the last place you'd expect to find anything flowing. A neutron star is like a big hunk of neutron material, just packed as tight as it can be. We call that matter degenerate because it can't get packed any tighter. Most materials, you push on them, they get denser. You push on them harder, they get denser. Not a degenerate material. You push on it, it's not going anywhere. Neutron stars are roughly a dozen miles in diameter, about the size of a large city. Neutron stars are so massive, and the mass is compressed into such a tiny region that it basically has started to warp space itself. Visiting its surface is impossible. Anything that you could build out of ordinary material would be immediately flattened and crushed on the surface of a neutron star. Neutron stars, the gravity is so high that even the highest mountain range on a neutron star is just measured in, in literally millimeters. Could liquid possibly exist inside this hostile environment? Surprisingly, the answer may be yes. Some scientists believe that neutron stars are not solid to the core. In fact, their interiors may be moving so freely they could be filled with something called superfluids, liquids with no thickness or viscosity. Viscosity is a measure of how resistant a fluid is to flowing. So a low viscosity material like water flows very easily. I mean, you can see how quickly it falls into this bowl. But honey, on the other hand, is very viscous and it flows more slowly. The thicker a fluid is, or the more viscous, the less it flows, the less things can move around in it. A superfluid has zero viscosity, a liquid so thin it never stops flowing. So in the bizarre fluid inside a neutron star, it has what we call a superfluid property. And so what that means is that if you start up some sort of current, you're able to start up a vortex inside a neutron star, then it will just keep going and going and going, and it won't die out. There's no viscosity that causes these currents to dissolve away. Some neutron stars spin like tops, rotating several times every second. And just like the metallic liquid hydrogen works for Jupiter, a superfluid interior sloshing energetic particles around spawns a massive magnetic field except that a neutron star's magnetic field is millions of times more powerful. Our planet has its own liquid churning deep inside. Although no one has ever seen it, life on Earth wouldn't exist without it. Life as we know it wouldn't exist without liquids. On Earth, you might think it's water that's most critical but there's another earthly liquid that's just as vital. 